Hello everyone. This is Whitney from Star Hearth Astrology and I'm here to talk about the fourth quarter of the lunar cycle, um, which goes from July 12th to the new moon, the Cancer new moon on July 20th. Um, and I'm going to go over the major transits um, that happen just kind of day by day so that you know what your week might look like um, and talk about some of the larger themes and the stuff that we might encounter this week, things that are starting, things that are ending, building towards that, um, that new moon on Monday the 20th. So we'll just hop right in. Okay. So as I said, we're looking at the 12th through the 20th. We enter the fourth quarter of the lunar cycle um, on the evening of the 12th. So that's, um, so it overlaps a little bit with last week's video just because of when we enter. Um, so I wanted to go over some of the major things that happened last week, just to kind of refresh your memory and to kind of um, plug them thematically because um, it's in making those connections that we really kind of um, see the cyclical movements in our lives um, and can really find meaning that way. So we had Mars square to Mercury on, I think it was Tuesday, Wednesday the 8th. Um, and that was kind of our hot button transit of the week because it's, um, it's emotionally reactive. Um, there can be some kind of inflamed emotions that happen, right, um, with Mars and Aries squ squaring a retrograde Mercury and Cancer. Mercury and Cancer being very defensive and emotional, and Mars and Aries being um, pretty aggressive. So then we had the Moon enter the waning gibbous phase, so a little bit of a release of the emotional tension. Um, we start looking towards a little bit more at, okay, what has really been accomplished um, versus kind of being in that culminated full moon phase. Then we had Chiron station retrograde. Um, actually today, right now, as I'm recording this, it is July 11th. And, um, and so that Chiron retrograde station, I'm not sure how much you're gonna feel it so much um, as it is kind of Chiron, the medicine man, um, moving through the sign of Aries, the sign of ourselves and where we define and um, act on our most immediate impulses and of bringing the medicine to, um, to that question of who am I? Right, and kind of helping us. Sometimes I think that's the hard medicine of looking at what we've done and what we stand for um, culturally and personally. Um, and sometimes that is kind of finding the grace in our way through it. Um, yeah, so if those themes are coming up or if it's hitting uh, an intense part of your chart that happens about at about nine degrees of Aries. So nine degrees of the cardinal signs being highlighted as well as the late 20s um, in the cardinal signs with all of our Capricorn and Cancer action. Then we have Mercury stationing direct, um, which I'll get into a little bit more when we go over what happened in the 12th because really that is the first big thing that happens this week. Um, and you can take a little bit to feel it. The station degrees of Mercury tend to kind of emphasize those um, Mercury themes, retrograde themes a little bit more. Um, and then we also have the sun trining Neptune. So getting a little bit of a dose of ease um, and grace. I mean, ease in the sense of the, the edge coming off. Um, and really maybe getting like a booster shot of whatever our, our mission is. Um, or, yeah, kind of um, not a booster shot in terms of energy, but a booster shot in terms of faith in what we're doing here. So that's kind of 
last week into this week wasn't a huge week. Um, so hopefully there was some time to kind of sort through everything that has been happening. I know a lot of people have been feeling like they can't see ahead, they can't plan the future, and all we can say about that is yes, that is true. We're in eclipse season, we've got lots of retrograde planets, um, and we're still in this kind of lull for a couple more weeks um, of just having to be present and live in the moment and not being able to reach um, for plans to use as security or for um, our faith in authority figures to use as security. And that is a theme that's going to go into next week, um, this kind of what's happening with our authority figures. And so, of course, that means the ones outside of us. It also means the ones inside of us. Um, as always. So let's get into it. So we are looking at the fourth quarter of the lunar cycle, which covers two phases. Each quarter has two phases. There's eight lunar phases. Um, so we enter the last quarter moon at 5.30 in the evening. All the times are in mountain time, so you can adjust for your time um, on Sunday the 12th. And the last quarter moon um, begins when the moon forms a square to the sun, so a 90 degree angle. So in this case, it's going to be the moon in Aries moving towards the sun in Cancer and forming that 90 degree angle, that square. And squares are of the nature of Mars. And so there is a conflict, there is a fight in them. Um, off, it kind of depends on which signs are involved um, as to the quality, but we have a cardinal square here. So we have moon in cardinal fire in Aries, squaring the sun in cardinal water. And so we kind of have this fire water tension. Um, and so the tension is between action um, and between intuitive and more instinctual behavior. We also have the sun in a sign ruled by the moon. Um, so there's a, there's a little bit more emphasis there. So the last quarter of the moon really shifts the energy. And this can be... I think there's as much tension in the, in the last quarter moon phase as there is in the first quarter moon phase. In the first quarter moon phase, the crisis is about what is being, what is coming into the light, what is coming into worldly manifestation or whatever. What, um, what do we really have the strength and the commitment to kind of bring out of the dark and to kind of nurture and hatch into the light, which obviously is not everything that is in the numinous dark right? That's just not possible in the realm of Saturn. Um, this has the opposite tension of kind of, okay, now we've gone through the lunar phase, we've culminated, whatever, we've looked at what we've made, and this one is a little bit of how we, how we let go, how we really reconcile ourselves with whatever it was that we did, um, and our own limitation and going back into the dark part of the hemicycle. But now we're not this fresh seed breaking the surface with this kind of energy that is impelling us forward. We are older. So, right, there's a way in which as we're growing as humans, in our youth, we kind of blast through these rites of passage um, and we kind of move outward into the world with a natural impetus, usually. Um, and then as we age, that retreat from the world is a little bit more painful. And so we feel that in the last quarter moon. Um, and I think the, the danger in the last quarter moon is really about judgment, is really about 
us looking at what happened and holding judgment for ourselves, holding judgment for other people, not having a lot of grace when grace is really kind of what we need to cultivate in order to release in back into the dark hemicycle. Um, so it can feel that kind of has that not quite midlife crisis, but this the crisis of entering old age, the crisis of not being as potent um, and having to acknowledge that your power is not as, it's, yeah, it's not at its peak. How do we let go? So that can be a little bit difficult. And certainly I think it's a little bit difficult to be born under that moon phase. Like I said, it's a different kind of crisis from the first quarter, um, but there's still this crisis there. It's, it's about kind of, yeah, letting go of the light and heading back towards into the dark. So there is this feeling of negotiation there um, of what's really important. We go from the outer world being more significant and more active into the inner world being more significant and more active. So there is a pull inwards. And usually that is accompanied with some, with a level of fatigue. And um, sometimes that fatigue is the, is our body signaling to us to go inward, to become less active, to begin restorative processes, um, rather than putting our energy out there. Um, yeah, there is kind of, I put a key phrase in here. Um, that's really about like making peace with whatever happened so that you can move on. Um, because really what we don't want is to get stuck here um, or stuck in our attachment to the past here. Because this is kind of the place where we start getting released um, to go back in for renewal. So then we'll shift into the waning crescent. Oops, I have the wrong times there. It's tomorrow, so ignore those times. Those do not get updated. Um, I apologize. The waning crescent is the most ancient phase of the moon. Um, it's also called the balsamic phase. Um, so we have the oldest ancient crone moon here. It's very internal, but internal in this way that's almost impersonal. The way that, you know, when people are very elderly, just the details of, of the worldly details matter less. What's happening around matters less. You can tell that they are much more tuned in deep within themselves than they are to the reality happening around them. And so there can be that similar kind of quality um, around us and inside of us of like, you know, when you're, when you're in those spaces between waking and sleeping, where you're being, you know, sometimes stimulated by thoughts and images and feelings, but you don't have this solid center of yourself that is kind of, you don't kind of know who is experiencing those things. Um, it's just not quite as cognitively defined. Um, so, this liminal space. And if we can kind of be in the grace of that, um, there's a lot of kind of gifts and insight and a lot of potential to kind of not take ourselves as seriously, which I think, you know, that's how we renew ourselves is to kind of let go of all of these things that we so strongly identify with our own desires, our own plans, our own righteousness, um, our own versions of reality, right? What happens in the balsamic moon is that we're less attached to that. And so we can kind of let all of that stuff go. And if you are one of those people that really likes to set new intentions at a new moon, then part of that 
I think the balsamic phase is, is a really, really important beginning of that ritual because there is all of this release of what you thought was the most important thing, and this release of your version of yourself. If something new is really going to come in, um, the old parts have to go away. So, um, so we kind of go into the weekend, next weekend, in this balsamic phase. Um, so next weekend is low energy, would we'll stay inside. We've got, an, we've got our second Cancer New Moon. Um, and so just um, really doing some emotional tending, not, not high stimulating activities for next weekend. Um, yeah, I think with the news that will come this week and the COVID news that will come this week, um, the, our feelings of being threatened and our feelings of vulnerability could be um, pretty acute next weekend. So hopefully we'll kind of all hermit crab cancer ourselves inside. Okay. So those are, that's kind of the energy. Um, and now we'll go kind of go into the details and look at a little bit more qualitatively what each day might feel like. Um, and hopefully that's fun for you guys. Okay. So Sunday, which we talked about a little bit um, on my last forecast and because we got some overlap. Okay, we have Mercury stationing direct at five degrees and 30 minutes of Cancer. So the beginning of um, Cancer, the beginning of cardinal signs, you might feel that, I find that people who are in Mercury ruled annular perfection years are gonna feel stations more heavily. Um, Virgo risings are really strong placements in Virgo, Gemini rising strong placements in Gemini feel Mercury shifts a little bit more. Um, but we all kind of, right, what we have is Mercury, our communicator that's been going back through um, reviewing stuff, especially about the past in Cancer, especially about family, with this kind of tone of nostalgia is halting backward motion and just kind of sitting for a minute. So we kind of get this pause to reflect before we move forward. Um, so we'll feel that for a couple days. Um, we probably have been feeling it. And now it's kind of this turn of like, okay, so where are we going? And now we're going to move through Cancer again. Mercury is not going to be out of the shadow of the retrograde until um, July 25th or 26th. So we have a couple weeks still of, of processing this. But now in a way, looking forward of what are we going to do so um yeah so we start to integrate kind of the flow of the past into the future that we are creating okay and then um at noon we have the sun in cancer trining neptune so you get a little bit of that mystical juice um and then in the evening we've got that square which brings us into the fourth quarter of the month. Then the moon will square Jupiter and Capricorn, and then the moon will square Pluto and Capricorn. And so we get this re-emphasis of this tension with Capricorn. So I think we can kind of um, be feeling a little bit frustrated by the end of Sunday um, with those kind of irritating squares um, feeling like we need to do something or we need to take action. Um, that might look like planning out your week um, pretty well, which would be good because as, as we lose the energy of the moon, as we're going into the new moon, we can kind of, that, or that structural kind of achievement energy dissipates. And so if we have a plan and we can just rely on the plan that we set on Sunday and Monday is going to be good for this too, then um, then we can kind of just follow the course that we've already set for ourselves instead of needing to kind of um, have that cardinal initiatory um, make it happen energy throughout the week because that is going to dissipate. Okay, 
So Monday is really make it happen day because we start with the moon in Aries square to Saturn in Capricorn. The moon wakes up ready to take action. Saturn has, you know, has the qualifications, wants to, um, you know, is looking at what do we need to do to accomplish our goals. And so that is really good Monday energy. It's good Monday. Um, and then we, in mid morning, the moon enters Taurus. So entering the sign of its exaltation. So it's going to be really, you know, it doesn't quite have the same oomph and the same energy as the moon in Aries. Um, but the moon in Taurus is really able to pay attention to the small structural pieces of our lives. That's why it's exalted there. The moon that is already concerned with the small pieces of our lives um, in Taurus can really kind of ground the body. Um, yeah, ground the body, ground itself, not be so frenetic. Um, and making sure that we get what we need, but also that we're doing what we need to do. <clears throat> it's going to check in late in the evening with the sextile to Mercury and Cancer. And so that's the first contact we've had with a body connecting with Mercury, who's now, um, who's now direct. Um, so that sextile is really going to help us um, realize the energy of Mercury and Cancer and bring that into our personal experience. Um, and so we can start getting little hints as to if we are changing things and bringing new stuff into our lives, what that's gonna look like in a practical um, and personal Taurus and Lunar way. Um, so I really like Monday for, for organizing the week and getting stuff done. Tuesday has a little bit more of, um, there's a little bit more dynamic energy happening there. You see it, it's all kind of in the morning. So, right, we, we will probably wake up on Tuesday with a different feel than Monday, um, some different shifts going on. So we've got the sun and Cancer opposing Jupiter and Capricorn. So here's kind of the first of these aspects where authority figures will be um, where we'll experience some trickiness um, with authority figures. So the Sun and Cancer opposing Jupiter and Capricorn, they, um, they'll have this tension um, of trying to make a world that feels better for the sun and cancer and Jupiter kind of being stuck in the status quo of Capricorn. Um, but Jupiter has some optimism. Um, and so there can be this kind of, um, there's a solution focused um, orientation to this aspect of like the challenges are clear, but also they're working to make things um, yeah, look for practical solutions um, along the Cancer Capricorn axis. So these are solutions that make people feel um, that make people feel safe, that are productive, um, but that are also going to be um, both informed by um, by our emotional needs and our practical needs. Then we'll have Mars conjoined Chiron. So we have the warrior conjoining the medicine man. And so, right? I mean, I feel like Chiron's such a complicated archetype. Um, gets a lot of kind of honor for being the wound. So, okay, so we have this wound and the warrior uniting to kind of um, really figure out the wounds to to ourself, to our inner masculine. Um, but we also have the medicine man aspect of Chiron. And so we also have the potential of healing that. Um, so I think, um, yeah, we might see, um, we might see stuff around injury, um, but also I think we're going to, this is really, um, an aspect which we can use to diagnose issues with our own strength and our own assertion. Um, 
So we can really kind of, I don't know, it just seems like such a powerful, full energy for um, doing work around healing wounds to our power. So all of the ways that we feel disempowered um, and kind of how do we use courage and bravery as medicine um, to kind of restore a sense of empowerment with us. Um, so I really like that one. I think that is something that, you know, thinking about my due date being this week, that aspect will probably still be an orb when I give birth and thinking about, okay, what does it mean to have a child that has a, you know, a really strong Mars and Aries conjoining Chiron? Um, is that injury or is that, uh, you know, a gift of being a powerful physical healer? I guess we'll see. Um, but there's something, so there's just mythic juiciness there. And then we have the moon and Taurus conjoining Uranus. So the moon conjoining Uranus can get a little bit shaken, but again, it's an exalted moon. So, you know, this is innovative solutions um, to bodily stuff. So that's a little bit in the same vein as this Mars conjoining Chiron. Okay, what is the new medicine? What is the medicine that we've been overlooking? Um, how do we just, um, yeah, suddenly set ourselves free because this thing that we had never thought about before comes to us. So look for surprises. Um, and it can come from inside you, it can come from outside you in terms of what is it that you need to do. So the energy of Tuesday kind of has this threshold crossing of like, okay, we're gonna have the sun intention, we're gonna have Mars looking for the medicine, and then we have the moon kind of with the potential to absorb these kind of cosmic downloads um, from our innovative Uranus. Um, cosmic downloads that have very practical implications. So there's a way in which we're kind of, I just get this feeling that we're stepping over a line on Tuesday. Um, there's a potential of that. And maybe, um, you know, it will depend on which one of these aspects hits your chart the most. Okay, Wednesday. Okay, so the energy of Wednesday is we've got the moon in Taurus. So the moon in the earth sign for basically the whole day until the very end. See, it goes into Gemini. Um, just before midnight. And so we've got the moon in Taurus. It's working through all of our Capricorn. Um, yeah, all of our Capricorn Cancer stuff, but it's in Taurus. So it's forming a sextile to the Capricorn stuff, which is a more helpful, more constructive, and a trine to our Cancer stuff. So in a really easy flow with that. So it's in a really good position to be a negotiator along that axis. Um, and so we'll feel all of that stuff, but we won't feel it in this way that's necessarily so overwhelming or drags us down or, um, yeah, um, or is in this way that we can't cope with it. It's really kind of like, okay, let's just put on our big girl pants and deal with all the truths of the Capricornian situation. So we've got the moon in Taurus, sextile Neptune in Pisces. First thing, um, that sounds like some pretty cool dreams to wake up from. Neptune and Pisces kind of giving us a little bit of the dream juice right at the edge of dawn when we're waking up. And then we've got the moon trying Jupiter in Capricorn. Um, you know, so again, they're looking for positive solutions that can kind of the trine is an easy conversation for them to have about it. Um, and so we can kind of, you know, it can be a little bit hard to build the inertia at the beginning of the day, but there's a kind of a good practical attitude to the day. Um, then we have it sextile the sun and cancer. That is so nice when the, when the moon and the sun, um, 
when our two luminaries kind of get in touch with each other, especially in a harmonious aspect, kind of just, there's this kind of just grace to that. Um, I'm just realizing, I think I said that the moon was trining Cancer and sextiling Capricorn, um, and that's incorrect. It's trines Capricorn and sextiles Cancer, so my apologies for that. I'm a double Virgo and Mercury is in retrograde and I must speak. Oh no. Okay, sounds like a good opportunity for self-forgiveness or a sense of humor or something. <laughs> then we've got the moon trine Pluto. So that can, you know, that can be a little bit heavier. Um, but, you know, I don't know how much these little aspects totally change. Um, it's kind of retroactively. If you have something happen, you can kind of look back and be like, oh, I was really feeling that transit. Um, but I try not to be too fear-based in looking at the weeks ahead, especially little stuff like that. Okay, then we have the sun and cancer opposes Pluto. And so here is really the challenge to authority figures. And I think this is where it'll be interesting to watch the news. Um, because the sun in opposition to Pluto is kind of no joke. We've got the sun, which represents kind of this, you know, our leaders and powerful um, masculine energy, people in positions of power, really confronting the Plutonian um, existential void. And so, or, right, which makes them feel very small, or we see this great psychological inflation in response to that. Um, so it can certainly bring up some shadows um, when that happens. Um, some can get a little bit doomy. So just watch out for that. Um, and then we have the moon trying to Saturn in Capricorn by the evening. So that's kind of things come back down to size, right? We've got the moon in Taurus. It still wants to, you know, make sure that it's physically okay, that it's physically safe. It's checking in with Capricorn back in kind of our status quo Capricorn that's, you know, going through a bunch of upheaval. Um, so that can kind of ground us again if the Plutonian themes took over a little bit more. And then, um, and then we have the moon slip into Gemini. So in Gemini, the moon is much more verbal, much more curious, much more dynamic. It's moving around. It's still ruled by um, our Mercury that's just stationed um, direct. So we can feel a little bit of those mercurial shifts, kind of get into our mind a little bit more about what's gonna happen um, in response to the Mercury retrograde that we all just went through. But we are in darker parts of the moon. Um, so it's less about kind of setting intentions and looking towards plans, more just like st starting to sift through the data with an eye to the future. Okay, so Thursday, understanding the medicine. We've got the moon in Gemini sextile to Chiron. Um, and if you look at these transits, they all happen in the evening. So really we're coasting on the moon entering Gemini and approaching these transits. Um, but the beginning of the day is pretty clear of just the moon in Gemini. And so that would just be looking at your own chart because the moon's probably aspecting some somewhere, um, something in there. Um, so we have the moon in Gemini sextile to Chiron and Aries. So we can start, you know, we're gonna get a little tickle of that medicine. And then the moon enters the waning crescent phase an hour after that, so the balsamic phase. So again, okay, so we've got this medicine from Chiron and Aries that's healing the wounds of the self, the, the self-inflicted wounds. Um, and, then, and then the moon goes into this impersonal kind of balsamic phase. Um, and so, has even less energy. And so the end of the week is very low energy, even with this, um, with all of kind of like the insights coming in. Um, and then we have the moon sextile to Mars and Aries. So it kind of touch base, 
touches base with Chiron and then Mars because they're so close together. Um, they had that conjunction. And so they, the moon and Mars, there's a little bit of like a sparkle in the end. It would be fun to like play Catan on Thursday night. Um, Settlers of Catan, I don't know if you guys play that game. Um, but the moon in Gemini loves games and doing a little bit of like warlike. So maybe the cities and knights expansion. Oh, I'm such a Catan nerd. Anyway, um, love Catan would be a great night for playing Catan. Okay, then coming into Friday. Friday's fun. We've got this, we've, you know, kind of got a little respite um, of the moon in Gemini conjoining Venus in Gemini. So we've got a moon Venus conjunction. Uh, we get one per month. It's in Gemini, so it's social. Um, that happens at midnight, so you know you can can kind of um, feel that approach on Thursday night, um, and then also kind of wake up with that on Friday. Um, uh, but there's just this kind of like <sighs> a little bit of this moment of. Just like if you can come up to what is superficial, not superficial in the sense of petty, but superficial in the sense of like enjoying funny things on the surface. It's like, you know, a good day to like share some memes and to like stop taking this project so seriously for just a minute. Um, and then early in the afternoon, we've got a moon, the moon square to Neptune and Pisces. And that is just going to kind of be, hopefully you get out of work early if you're working or just kind of, um, take a break because you're probably not going to be too productive after that. Um, we've got, you know, a kind of ADHD, curious, fun moon um, in Gemini squaring Neptune and Pisces, which is just going to dissipate the energy even more. And they're balsamic. So it's kind of like um, maybe take a nap would be a good, you know, Friday afternoon. Good time for napping. It's gonna be fun. Okay, then in Sat on Saturday, we get the moon entering Cancer. Um, so again, this kind of withdrawal into these private, emotionally safe spaces, and we're in the balsamic phase. So we're already kind of in this liminal space. Um, it's gonna be better to be safer in that liminal space. Um, and then we have the moon conjoining Mercury and Cancer. So we had the moon kind of touch in. We've watched it kind of over the course of the week. It's sextiled Mercury and Cancer from, um, from Taurus. And then it was in Mercury's sign in Gemini. And then um, it came into Cancer and there's a conjunction. And so we get the moon conjoining Mercury great space for kind of journaling, for really being in the Cancerian, nostalgia, emotional um, place of memory, um, but also goofiness. And I think, right, um, Cancer has this kind of childlike goofiness, like the goofiness of a toddler. Um, and so there can be that kind of like, um, mm, I think the, some of us kind of look at it and it feels like a little bit of a naivete coming from the other signs, um, but kind of the, um, the genius of, um, of delight that is in cancer um, is pretty sweet as long as it's safe. And then we have Sunday, which has kind of a bunch of, you know, the moon kind of pinging around to all of this different stuff. So it's kind of a choose your own adventure day because it's going to, it's going to matter how it all hits your chart, um, but could be just emotional, um, emotional weekend, um, but you probably won't have the energy to get too dramatic with those emotions. So just rest, I don't know, nap. So we've got the moon and Cancer squared to Chiron and Aries. Okay, so we're gonna be feeling a little bit more of the emotional effects of that. We had, we started off 
this forecast with that um, that moon conjoining Chiron and Aries. And now we've got the square, so that's going to hit home a little bit more. Then we have the moon and Cancer sextile Uranus and Taurus, right? Um, and so it's kind of catching up with where we are on that. That could, you know, maybe you're waking up at 3 a.m. Um, or maybe you find the solution in a dream to something. Um, and then we've got the moon square to Mars. So again, that could be a little bit of an ouch. Um, you know, Mars wants to wake up and go on a run, hop in some workout routine, and the moon in Cancer is feeling a little bit just kind of like stickier and is more um, craving comfort. And so there could be um, a little bit of attention there. And then we've got this long space in the middle of the day where um, I'll just kind of, you know, you'll just kind of see what happens, building to the moon trining Neptune and Pisces, which is going to be this really graceful um, kind of lull into evening, um, watching some kind of artsy movie that could be really appropriate. Um, but uh, yeah, practicing emotional self-care because there could be, um, yeah, just, you can just be a lot more sensitive um, with all of this Cancer energy. And then the moon is gonna oppose Jupiter and Capricorn. So feeling that, um, I think this will be kind of our Sunday's scary aspect um, of just feeling the weight of the week ahead, especially because we're still in the balsamic phase. We haven't had the new moon yet. Um, that doesn't happen until Monday. So we can just be feeling really drained at the end of the weekend and not really feeling up to um, heading into the next week. And then Monday, we have our second Cancer New Moon. So I'm going to make a separate video just about this um, Cancer New Moon and kind of some themes of what I think is going on and the significance of having two Cancer New Moons. One that we had on the solstice, which was an eclipse at zero degrees Cancer, and then the second one that we have at 28 degrees of Cancer. So we kind of had the most pure version at zero degrees of Cancer of the Cancer flavoring inflated with the sense of an eclipse. And now we're kind of having the crone version of it. Of like, what does what does the end of cancer look like? What does the maturity of cancer after we've kind of gone through this Mercury retrograde in cancer and the sun's whole time in cancer? Um, yeah, if we are experiencing a second new moon, how does this kind of second beginning look different than um, than that first beginning? Um, and how does that kind of serve as a pivot point for the year in terms of how have our expectations changed in terms of what can be accomplished and what's really important for this year. So really powerful um, place of reflection, but again, don't do that reflecting with your mind. Soften the edges of yourself and let kind of, let the more feminine aspects of your nature bring in images, bring in sounds, don't worry about what it means because that's not the point, right? Like feel new things coming up in you without needing to control them and name them. Um, yeah, so we've got the moon in Cancer opposing Pluto and Capricorn. Um, hopefully while we're all asleep, um, and so that can really just connect us with deeper archetypal themes of what's happening. And then mid-morning, we have a new moon. That new moon is basically an exact opposition to Saturn. Um, so, right, so again, this is like, what do our expectations look like for the rest of the year um, with this? Um, and I'll have a whole video to talk about the new moon. And then we, after the new moon, we switch into a new lunar phase and then quickly we kind of accelerate out of it because we've got the moon has a new moon and a water sign and we're dreamy and then it catches on fire in Leo and we've got some oomph and now we've got the sun in Cancer and the moon in Leo and we've got mutual reception between the sun and the moon. Um, 
and the individual kind of gets reborn. Now we've got these two luminaries in this fresh aspect, in this fresh aspect with each other, kind of getting to um, um, get the the rechristening energy of the new moon in signs where they complement each other really well. Um, and then the sun is going to run into an opposition with Capricorn, so or with Saturn, um, get cut down to size, and we'll see. But then the next day it heads into Leo, so then we are in Leo season. So this is kind of the final ritual of a Cancer season that has felt very, very long with eclipses and retrogrades um, and some confusing times and some really deep emotional work that a lot of us have been doing. Um, so I hope you have a good week through these transits. Um, let me know what happens and I will see you on the other side. Goodbye.